What's up guys, I'm Amanda, the Botanical Burnett, and welcome to my channel. It has been a full month since I've done my Airway Market unboxing. I am ready to share with you guys a month update on these plants. I know that I just did a two week update, really which should have been my one week update, but that kind of went over my acclimation process. So in that video, I kind of talk about basically what I've been doing with my acclimation. We're trying to get these plants acclimated to my home, but these plants are pretty much acclimated by now. I know it's only been a month, but I have a lot of updates, especially if you've seen the two week update. There is a lot that has happened in two more weeks with these plants. So much so that I have a plant that I'm ready to repot. So this video is going to be me kind of going over all of my plants, all of my imports that I got from Aeroid Market about a month ago, and I'm gonna be doing a repot with me. So let's get started. Let's talk about all of these imports. So during this acclimation process, during this whole thing, I mean, this is my first time I've ever imported any plants. So I'm kind of, going with it. I'm just kind of winging it. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. I've been doing a lot of research, like Googling, like questions and stuff, literally rapid firing questions into Google constantly. It's just me being a paranoid plant mom. I have three plants that have done the best and two plants that have done okay. One I'm really kind of struggling with and then one I really don't know what's going on with it, but it's doing okay, it's just, you'll see in a minute. So let's talk about the plant that I'm not really sure what's going on with that. So let me put this guy aside. Now the plant that I really don't know what's going on is this Lapisia fishbone. So I got this jar for it to live in because it needed a lot of humidity and it was perking up it was doing really well and then all of a sudden the leaves started to just kind of droop so i don't know i might need to get like a seal for this because i don't think that the jar like the lid on it is sealed enough to where it's really sealing in that moisture i think temporarily i might take like some like cellophane like saran wrap and wrap that on there and when i put it in it should give it a little seal I really don't need to open up this whole thing, so I'm not really sure. So this lapis is doing okay. You can see not really much growth has happened. She's just kind of stayed the same, but her leaves are starting to curl in and they're kind of droopy. So I'm thinking that the humidity in there is just not enough. I change out the water on this lapis constantly, honestly, like every I find myself doing this at least once a week. Um, I don't want to open the jar too much because I don't want to let any humidity out. I think that's really just the problem with this. I know it's getting enough water. I have added a little bit of fish shit and Super Thrive back into this to kind of help give it some more growth. And I did kind of bend the stem down in the jar a little bit so it would be able to grow some roots on the top, like on the further up this stem. Now I've been debating and let me know in the comments if you think this is a good idea, but for this plant, I've been debating on kind of just putting a bunch of moss in this bottom area of this jar and then kind of planting the lapisia in there and then kind of sealing it off, kind of getting it out of water. But I don't want to add too much stress to it. So I think for now, I'm going to try to seal that off as best as I can in that jar. And then maybe after kind of putting the moss in there once it perks back up. But for now, I mean, it's still pretty. It still is okay. It's just a little like, weren't weren't like a little, just a little sad. I don't know. I mean, I think humidity is usually the issue. This plant, I remember when I was really starting to acclimate it, it was, if you haven't seen my other videos, that plant was basically in my garage and I had all of my plants acclimating in my garage. It is a Northeast window, so it gets bright morning light and kind of like a little afternoon light but not a ton so it did you know it did maintain a good amount of like indirect light when i had my dryer running now i do my laundry like once or twice a week and when i had my dryer running 
it would be like 99 plus. My hygrometer didn't go above 99% for the humidity, so I'm assuming it was probably even more than that. But normally it would actually maintain like 60 to 70% humidity in my garage at all times when my dryer wasn't running. So it did get a good amount of humidity, so I'm not really sure, but once I put it, in a Ziploc bag, it perked right up. So that's what I'm kind of thinking. I think it's just a humidity issue with this plant. So because I like to kind of start with like a, like a sadder note and then go up from there, we're gonna talk about two plants that are doing okay, but a little bit more difficult. So the plant that is doing okay and not super difficult is this Monstera. So this Monstera, if you saw my unboxing, you saw that it did come with a bunch of sad leaves. I did wind up cutting those off and I kept this leaf and it honestly, I mean, it does look rough, but it hasn't changed. It hasn't gotten more yellow. It's just kind of stayed the same. Now for the roots, we have a good amount of roots growing on there. I'm gonna actually take this out so you guys can see the roots. And also, so I have a couple growth points on here and actually there's one in here that's starting to open up and it's going to become a new leaf soon. But I mean, it's doing okay with like the root growth. Like we're getting some good new water roots. So yeah, I mean, I really don't have much to update on this plant just because it's not really doing bad, but it's not doing great either. So it's just gonna have, it's just gonna be a bit of time before I can get this plant to really, really get better. <laughs> it's actually funny. I went to Equigenera. Um, they had like an open house and I saw a bunch of those Monsteras and I'm like, do I get one? Do I get another one just in case? But I think I'm just gonna try to see what happens with that one. It will be a, kind of a fun experiment and also really fun to kind of like look back like on this video and see where it is now in let's say six months. <sighs> so the next plant that is doing okay it's actually pretty it's one of my more difficult plants and you can probably tell from the screen that it's a lot smaller <laughs> and that is this philodendron so we are down to one leaf very sad basically what happened was it was not producing any roots in the water at all no matter what i was doing it was not producing any roots so basically what i did was i filmed an instagram reel and put this plant in moss i basically did everything that i normally do i pre-moistened the moss people were telling me left and right like put it in moss it will grow roots do it, do it, do it, and I did, and I lost three leaves in that process. It did not like the moss. It had done fine. It, it literally just didn't really do anything in the water. It was not growing, but not, not growing. It was just kind of like sitting in water and doing nothing. Yeah, so basically where I'm at now is this one leaf, big, beautiful leaf, is the only leaf I have left. I wound up putting it back in water because I was just scared. The moss was just not doing it. I have some good news with this plant. So let me take it out of the water. So I noticed this, that the top of this plant had really good aerial roots. The bottom of the plant had like dark, almost dried out aerial roots. And I'm like, those, and those were what I thought was going to start rooting. And they didn't. And I was like, I'm so confused on that. But I found these. Oops. So these two aerial roots, I'm gonna try to swing it around. So these two aerial roots are actually starting to bud. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up, but there's like tiny little white spots on it. 
Those are little baby roots that are growing and I'm so excited. This plant also has a bunch of growth points. So eventually it's going to produce new leaves like right here. I have a growth point right there um, that's gonna eventually be a full on plant. I mean, I don't have anything growing in this, these two sets of nodes. The nodes are just kind of, I think what grew out of them is kind of just dead. Um, but I'm holding on to hope because I wound up keeping part of the chunk and I just threw it in the water because I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. So this was the bottom of it. So you can see like all of those dark, dark roots. I did notice today that, of course, cause I cut it, that it's starting to grow a root like right in there. Like what the heck? Of course it is. This also has a couple growth points and that's why I kept it. Cause I wanted to make sure that, you know, if it's gonna give me more leaves and you know, everything like that, like I want to keep as much as I can. Now I could throw this into like a prop box, but I'm just gonna leave it in the water and I'm just gonna let it do its thing. So this plant is doing, like I said, okay. I am sad that I lost those leaves, but lesson learned. I don't really know what happened with that. I just don't think that the, I think that the plant was just so used to like taking up so much water for several weeks. And then I decided to put it in moss and it was like, hang on a second, what the heck? So <laughs> I don't even know, <laughs> but yeah. So that is what's going on with that plant. Hopefully we'll get that root that uh, growth point will grow and we'll get a new leaf. But in the meantime, it will stay in water until it's fully rooted. Cause I just, I don't want to mess with it. And even then I may even switch it over to semi-hydro. I might put it in pond or something like that. Just cause I have found that a lot of philodendrons do well in pond, but we'll see. I mean, I feel like that's far down the road. We're done with the bad plants. We're done with the, the plants that are giving me a hard time and causing my anxiety to rise. Let's talk about the good plants. So both of my philodendrons have been amazing. They have been so good and I actually repotted them. I'll show you this one first. So this is my philodendron Florida beauty. Look at the leaves, like, come on. I still can't get over it. And have a leaf coming out shortly. So pretty soon I'm gonna have another leaf. Like I'm just so happy on how well this plant acclimated, like honestly. And it shipped really well, like it's just done so well. So I actually repotted this plant about a week ago and look at these roots. That's a week, only a week. And I have all of that root growth already like pretty established in the soil and they're fuzzy if you look at really like close up they're like fuzzy and cute like if roots can be cute <laughs> i actually put both of these plants in like recycled containers this is like a cup that i had maybe a starbucks cup like the bottom of it and i just took like a screwdriver like a small screwdriver and like jammed holes in it and there's a bunch on the bottom too no, it's actually a solo cup. So whatever, but I, I was like, I want to be able to see the roots. Like any of these plants, I think I'm going to start planting a lot of my plants in like clear planters. Cause it's just nice to pull them out of the jar and just be like, okay, yeah, the roots are looking a little root rotted or they're looking a little funky. Let's take it out versus having to keep repotting it. Um, and reusing like jars are funny. Like, so this one's actually pretty funny. <laughs> this is in a medium salsa jar from Publix, <laughs> but it fits so well <laughs> in this. Um, I tried to peel off the label and it just was a mess. So I left it on there. I was like, whatever, it can be a little spicy salsa or medium salsa. You can see a couple roots growing out here. Like it's just doing so well. And look at all of those little growth points. There are so many, there's like one here, 
one here i mean they're everywhere one here it's growing so so well and if you guys notice the top of the soil is a little funny it's actually systemic i'm dealing with thrips again <laughs> just wanted to pre-treat most of my plants so pretty much all of my plants are going to have systemic on them including the plant that i'm going to be repotting today so that takes me into the plant that is doing one of the best and that is my monstera elbow oh she's doing so good oh my goodness now no new leaves yet i do see like the spot back here that maybe one day the only issue i've been having with this plant is i have found a new thing I've never dealt with. And literally this whole video, the fumes have been like making me want to gag. A lot of monsteras are known for getting rust fungus. Basically, it's just this like rusty, I can show you. I have some neem oil on all of it, but it's just those little, let me see if I can find like good ones. It's just those like dots on the back of the leaf that are an issue. I'm trying neem oil right now, uh, just because I have it. And it does, it, you know, according to the internet, it said that it is helpful to get rid of rust fungus or at least manage it. I don't want to cut that leaf off. I know you guys are probably like, you've got to just cut it off and just start over. But I really don't, I really don't want to cut that leaf off. So I'm going to try to treat it. This is the plant we're going to be repotting today. Are you guys ready to see these roots? These are insane. Look at that. She is ready to go. Now I usually wait and look at that like aerial roots. What the heck? Like it is just, it's, it's ready to go. It's ready to be planted and ready to be in some soil. Now, I usually do, you guys know, probably, on some of my plants, I'll do like an in-between stage, which is basically like, I will put the plant in water, get those roots going, and then put it in moss as like a way to kind of like adapt to soil, just because Sometimes when your plant grows water roots strictly, it can have a hard time transitioning into soil. So that in-between stage kind of helps the plant adapt to the soil a little bit easier. I'm not going to be doing that. I know you guys are probably like, you should. I am gonna be planting it in a container, a clear container, so we'll be able to watch the roots and make sure that it's doing okay. I'm pretty confident in repotting that plant now. I think it will be fine and yeah, I'm I'm excited to see. I mean, I think that, you know, the roots have grown enough. As soon as I planted both of my philodendrons in soil, they started sprouting new growth. In water, it was just kind of staying the same. So I think with me like fertilizing them and kind of getting them ready that they're doing good. Let's get started. I'm gonna go over the repot process for that Monstera. I'm gonna go over potting mixes. I'm gonna actually mix some soil for you guys. I know normally when I do my repots, they're already pre-mixed. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I'm doing for a soil mixture for that plant. And I'm gonna show you a really cute pot that I have been holding onto for a while because I knew that I was getting this Monstera. I saw this pot at TJ Maxx or Marshalls or wherever and I had to get it, but it's a planter that I've been really excited to use on this plant. So let's repot this beautiful Monstera elbow. All right guys, so I have my little bucket to do a little mixture for you. This isn't really going to be a total like repot mixture thing, but I'll kind of give you an idea of what I'm doing. So I have this orchid potting mix that I absolutely love. I love this stuff. It already has perlite in it, like really coarse perlite. It has bark of course and it has charcoal in it so it already has like three things that you need it's honestly like great if you're lazy like me and you don't want to like completely mix your soils 
Now the soil here that I keep this spade in, <laughs> this soil here is Fox Farm Ocean Forest with a lot of perlite. So I already pre-mixed that. So that's kind of like already, you know, already done for you guys. <laughs> but I'm going to be adding a bunch of orchid bark into the mixture. I want it to be very loose, very, very like easy breezy. Monsteras love really barky soil. So you want to make sure that you put it in a good barky soil. So I'm going to probably do this about 50, 50, not going to be anything crazy. So the planter that I'm going to be using is actually a atomic spicy pickle jar from, I think this is from Aldi's. Um, if you've not had these atomic, pickle, atomic pickles, they're pretty good. They're not really that spicy, but, uh, and I drilled a giant drainage hole in the bottom. I probably could do more drainage holes, but I'm not going to for now. I'll see how it does. I had a, another philodendron in this and it outgrew it so like well. So I think that it's enough drainage for that plant. And plus it's gonna be super loose and barky that it's not gonna be a problem. And then I'm just gonna dump a bunch of bark in here. Like a little spider. <laughs> now, yes, this is probably going to be too much for this little planter, but I want to just kind of pre-mix this and anything that I don't use today, I'm going to just add back into here. Because honestly, like I kind of use the same mix for a lot of my plants. Um, this is basically the same like mixture that I use for most of them. And also don't do what I just did. Um, you can get splinters. <laughs> I, as soon as I reached my hand in the bag, I was like, oh no. All right, so I'm gonna put these, the soil and the moss or the bark away. And we're gonna mix up this mixer up, mixer up. It's good to have like a little bucket to just kind of like mix it with in. Again, I probably could have made this easier for myself and I could have just mixed bark into the soil that I already have. But there are some plants that do need a little bit different like mixtures. Like I don't want to do like this type of soil. You can, but I don't like, I don't prefer to do this like on pothos or anything like that because it dries out too fast. So, and I don't really, if I root rot a pothos, too bad, like whatever, it will survive but I don't want to root rot a monster elbow because who knows when I'd be able to get another one again. So here she is in all her glory. So like you normally would, I'm going to put about halfway. Now, let me see. This monstera will probably outgrow this pot pretty fast, but honestly, I kind of want it to be a little bit compacted so, okay. So I actually might put a little bit more than half day. And if you've seen my repots, you know that I'm not, I'm not like super particular and super like whatever. I kind of just go with the flow. That might be too much. Let me see. Uh, yeah, we'll probably do a little bit more. I might do it to the top of this aerial note right here. Aerial, oh my God, aerial node. Note. So we're gonna pour some of that back. But I do want a good amount because I know the roots are gonna try to like travel down and I don't wanna have to repot it too quickly, but that should be perfect. So you can see that it's the soil line will probably be just above this um, root right here. Now what I might do is just cause it's the roots are kind of big. 
I am gonna sprinkle a little bit of rooting hormone in the pot. Kind of just sprinkle a little bit. Once you water it, it will kind of all go together. It will all kind of get mixed in. Probably gonna make my life easier if I just move this over here. <laughs> just kind of like shift this. Wow, so much easier. All right, I'm done with that. <laughs> Aren't you guys proud of me for getting a repot mat? Not that like having a repot mat makes you like the actual like plant parent, but like I feel legit now that I have it. All right, so we are filled up. I'm just gonna keep tapping the sides. What that does is actually will fill in the gaps. You don't wanna push the soil down. You don't wanna compact it too much, but kind of tapping it will just loosely get it into all the little cracks. It's so nice to have a clear pot because you can see like what's happening in the in the soil, in the roots. You can just keep an eye on it really and just make sure that it's doing okay and everything like that. Like it's actually I took more soil than I thought it would. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's gonna, I mix way too much, but it actually wound up being pretty perfect. Like I have a little extra, but the stuff that's left in there doesn't really have bark, so. All right, so she's planted. I'm actually going to be carefully, I'm gonna carefully like push this into the soil. I might put a little extra over the top of that, just so that aerial root will go into the soil. Cause that also will grow more roots. Anytime, any of my monsteras that I have, if it's growing aerial roots or really even philodendrons, I redirect those into the soil to kind of give it some stability. But sometimes you just need to push them down in there because they're not gonna find it themselves. So here she is all potted up. Now you can't really see many of the roots, but you can see some of them. Like you can see some in this spot right here. So again, for the, over the next few days, I'm gonna be keeping an eye on this plant and just making sure that she does okay and everything like that. I'm going to put a little bit of systemic on the top, just to make sure that she doesn't have any friends joining her in her journey. Please don't come at me, I don't measure it. I just kind of throw it on there. So I'm actually going to repurpose this and I'm going to put this in here so I can water it. Not with that water. So for watering, I'm going to be watering my Monstera with this is just some fresh filtered water. I'm going to be using some fish shit. So this is the fish shit that I talk about all the time and some Super Thrive. So the fish shit and Super Thrive, this will help it adjust into the soil and just give it a little bit of nutrients. Again, I don't measure it. I'm sorry. Like I just don't, I just eyeball it. I know it hasn't, it hasn't failed me yet. So I do measure the fish shit when I do like a full like watering, like if I'm watering all my plants, it's easier to measure out. But this, I'm just gonna do a tiny bit and just kind of put it in there. All 
And I'm not gonna fertilize this watering, the next watering I'm gonna fertilize. The, the um, Fox Farm does have some fertilizer in it. I could put some Osmocote in there as well on the topsoil, but I'm just gonna stick with the other stuff. And then we're just gonna, when you're watering in the systemic, you'll wanna make sure that you really wet it all down. Clear pots are actually really cool too for like watering because you'd be able to see like how saturated the soil is. If there's like one part, you know, like one side that you didn't get enough, you'll be able to kind of see that and see how well the soil is absorbing in there. And this is already dripping through. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a little more of a rapid dripping than just a small amount. So we're gonna leave that in there, let it drip out, maybe even absorb a little bit more of that water, kind of like a bottom water sort of thing. So this is the planter that I got from Monstera and it has this like really cute like gold Thing. So you just kind of like place it like how pretty is that? I actually might glue this down onto it because I just don't want it sliding around. I think this is pretty good. Yep, we're not dripping anymore. So we'll put her right in her planter. Here she is all potted up all ready to go. I am so excited to see how well this plant does in some soil. Maybe she's gonna get some, hopefully she gets some good nutrients and everything, but that's basically it. That's my update. I probably won't do another update in a bit. I think it will be probably a little bit more fun to kind of like see how they do and like six months maybe or three months so that's basically it um i'm excited to see what my other plants do both the melania chrysum and the you know the monstera is just they're just doing okay i mean like i said it's just gonna take some time for them to get big and start growing new leaves it is a good sign that they both are growing roots especially the uh philodendron because it hadn't grown roots in a long time and i think also the trick was i did put it in a brighter area it's actually now on my plant shelf in my southeast window versus being on the side of it um i think it just wasn't getting enough light and now it's getting like close to direct sun so maybe that was the trick. It just needed more light for the roots to kind of burst through those aerial roots. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. And yeah, so that's it for today. I hope you guys all have a great day and stay botanical.